let me dive into what is this multi-unit, multi-cluster architecture looks like in a 120 to 40 system, starting with one inverter. Right, so this inverter is 6,800 watt. It can overload to 8,500 watts for 30 minutes. But what if that's not good enough? What if the customer needs more power? We add a second one. In this, now we have a master and slave. They're working together. They're supporting the same loads. They're connected to the same battery bank. As a matter of fact, let's call the DC side the DC bus. So everything on the DC bus, the array, the solar charge controllers, and the batteries are all connected to this new bigger inverter. So although you see two pieces there, once they're stacked as master and slave, they're going to behave as, as a single 13.6K system with the overload capability of 17K for 30 minutes. What if this customer needs more power? We can do three. So three inverters, one master, two slaves for 120 to 40. This is a 20.4K system with a 25.5K overload for 20 minutes. Now, something funny happened to my drawing here. I don't know if you noticed what, what I did here. So now I'm showing you a transfer switch. Okay. You may or may not need this transfer switch with three units. I will give you the guidelines exactly when you make the decision, but it's basically related to the 60 amp relay. And I'll show you that relay here in a couple of slides. But with three units, you may or may not need the transfer switch. Okay. With the four units, you are making a 24, I'm sorry, 27.2K system with the overload capability of 34K. And the only thing that this transfer switch is doing is bypassing the internal relay of the inverter so that we don't have to uh, be limited by the 60 amps capability of that relay. Okay, three-phase. Now, with the XW Pro, the three-phase capability is coming later this year. It's not available today, although I have to say this isn't a hardware change. It's only going to be a firmware change, but it's not ready yet. But if you need to do a 12208 three-phase system, the XW Plus is available, and you can do this with the XW Plus. In a three-phase system, what you have here is one inverter per phase. So you see uh, master of phase, phase A, master of phase B, and master of phase C. This will keep these inverters at 120 degrees. So they're 120 each, 120 volts each, and they are 120 degrees from each other. With the difference with 120 to 40, where the two faces, L1 and L2, are 180 degrees from each other, in a three-phase, the faces are 120. And they'll stay 120 from each other because of the programming. They can connect to a grid, they can export out to a three-phase grid, they can support three-phase loads. What if I need more power? So then I can add a second inverter to the phase. So now what I have is a master and a slave of each phase. When they are together, they will work as either three or six units as a single unit. This is very important and has surely has to do with UL listing. If there's anything wrong with one of the faces, then the whole system disconnects from the grid. Okay. So although you're seeing on my little block diagram here, these individual units, they are no longer operating as individuals. They are actually operating as a system. So in case of any uh, issues with the grid, they can disconnect. Any of the faces have a problem, then the whole system disconnects from the grid. And lastly, capability of the XW Plus is nine units, one master and two slaves per face. We actually have a multi-unit guide on our website if you are interested on looking at these larger systems. By the way, this nine system is a 61.2K continuous at 25 degrees C with the overload capability of 76.5K for 30 minutes. If you're interested on this architecture, 
I recommend our multi-unit guide, which is on our website. If you go under the products in XW Plus, and you will find it, on, I believe it's on the application notes, you will find the multi-unit guide for the sign and the multi-unit concept. for. So here is that 60 amp relay that I was mentioning before when we talked about that transfer switch. So what you see on my uh, uh, diagram here is K1 and K2 are these relays, K1 being connected to the grid and K2 connected to the generator. So these internal relays of the inverter are the ones that are 60 amp. When you parallel these relays, and that happens when do you do multi-unit design, you have one, you have two, you have three, you can't guaranteed that the current is evenly going to split between the multiple relays. So the only way to be sure that you're going to never exceed the maximum is by making sure that the critical load panel or protected load panel, I'm sorry, corrected my mistake there, the, uh, the uh, backup panel doesn't have any more than 60 amps or 13.6 kW continuous on the backup loads. If you have loads which can exceed 60 amps that on the backup loads, right? Not on the main panel, on the backup loads, then you're going to need a transfer switch. Look what's happening here on this table on the left side. I'm moving my mouse and see if I can use it as a pointer. With two units, it's no chance that you're going to exceed right, because of uh, the rating of the inverter. So you're most likely okay to use the two units with without a transfer switch. Once you move to three units, depending of how many loads you have here in the backup panel, although out to the grid, out to the main panel, and if this system is grid tie, it can export 18K. Once we start moving into four units, that's when I have seen that it's very likely that you're going to need a transfer switch. Because even with four units, then the continuous out to the backup panel continues to be 13.6. So let's look at the same table, but on the right side, this is a system with the transfer switch, right? Two units. No biggie, you don't need a transfer switch because the two units can handle it. But once you move out to three units, if your backup loads are 20.4, then you yes, you definitely need a transfer switch. And four units, 27.2 on the backup loads. For the next part of our presentation, our speaker will be Eric Benson. He is an electrical engineer and senior application engineer with Schneider Electric Solar. He will present more details on the power distribution accessories for single and multi-unit systems, as well as installations with an external transfer switch. So now we're, we're going to take a look at uh, systems, single and multi-unit. So the mini power distribution panel provides customers with a balance of systems solution that saves both money and space. Mounting beneath the XW Pro rather than beside it, there's no need for a separate conduit box. The keyed slots on the top of the mini PDP line up perfectly with the existing screws on the bottom of the XW. These same screws are used to mount the conduit box for installations that use the standard PDP. Gaining access to the XW wiring compartment simply requires removal of two screws. Here you can see the mini PDP mounting over the key slots and lining up with the DC bus bars. You simply bolt those on and uh, this whole process takes about 15 minutes. So here we see the mini PDP fastened in place with the DC bus bars bolted up and the AC wiring connected. The AC breakers are already pre-wired. So wiring to the XW is simply a matter of inserting plastic protective grommets in the knockouts and then push the AC wires through. So XW Pro is scalable up to four units in single phase for combined power output when inverting, charging, and selling. Note the AC sync cable 
and the XAN bus cable must be daisy chained to all the units in the system with only one master assigned and each with a different device number. Remember the acronym MSVXS. That stands for master slave, device number, XAN bus, and sync. I use the, uh, the memory aid. My simple demos extra special, you might choose to use something else. The standard power distribution panel was originally offered with the legacy XW models and carried over uh, to the XW Pro platform. The standard PDP provides enough AC breaker positions to accommodate uh, three XW multi-unit configuration and also provides positions for eight panel mount breakers. This product may not be practical for customers with a single unit um, unless they might have plans of expanding at a later date. Adding a second inverter has been made easier than ever by offering kits that provide complete balance of systems components. The 12240 breaker kit provides three two-pole 60 amp AC breakers, four power distribution bars, and a sliding interlock bypass plate that prevents backfeeding. The connection kit provides the additional conduit box, which mounts beneath the XW Pro, the AC wires, DC cables, and 250 amp battery breaker, and a large DC positive bus. It's important to remember the fan cooled XW Pro and MPPT80 have exhaust vents for the fan uh, right out the top. So it draws, they draw air through the bottom and exit out the top. Therefore, it's recommended to have sufficient clearance above so that the CFM is not impeded. Make sure you don't use the top of the inverter as a shelf for the uh, manual, because that'll block the airflow and people have done that before. And then you'll get an over temperature warning and you'll find out quickly why. Remember the Connects product lineup is indoor rated. Now you can see the mounting brackets interlock for side-by-side zero clearance. So you mount the bracket on a wall. They have stud spacing for your fasteners. And then you just two-man lift the 150-pound XW Pro. Um, and then the channel that's welded to the back plops in the, uh, the, the bottom portion and rests um, in the groove. And then you just bolt down the top. So here we see a triple inverter XW system with the PDP all very uh, aesthetically pleasing and uh, form fitting. You can see the conduit boxes are mounted beneath the inverters and the car distribution panel is all the way to the right. It is ambidextrous. The knockouts allow for left side mounting, right side mounting, or in between the inverters, it doesn't matter. And also the door for the power distribution panel for both the mini PDP and the full size PDP uh, can be uh, opening from the left or open from the right because the hinges can be moved. So note the sliding interlock plate that is exclusive for the dual systems. When stacking three or four inverters, if bypass capability is desired, then integrating an external manual transfer switch will be necessary. So you can see the sliding interlock plate requires you to turn off the load breakers before you can slide the plate over to energize the bypass breakers. This prevents back feeding the output of the inverter with an outside source of AC, which will cause damage. So always make sure your design um, uh, includes uh, interlock to prevent back feeding. And as always, it's highly recommended to have bypass capability when you're integrating an external source of AC, whether it's grid or generator, just in case you have to troubleshoot or do some maintenance on the battery. That way you can have power to your loads during that process. So here you can see the AC wiring for a dual XW Pro system. You have your power distribution bars that parallel the input breakers and the bypass breakers and allow a single point of connection to your AC input. That could be the grid, it could be a generator. And then of course your Bottom portion has power distribution bars that parallel the output breakers and the bypass breakers. Here we can see uh, AC wiring for a triple pro system. So note that there are no bypass breakers installed. You have three input breakers that are paralleled with power distribution bars 
and three output breakers that are paralleled with power distribution bars. Designing a system that can invert more power than it can pass through is not a good practice. Since you shouldn't pass through more than 60 amps with a multi-unit system, utilizing a whole house transfer switch will allow the cell power to offset the grid demand and then switch the load to the output side of the inverter in a grid outage. Here is normal operation. And here we see the loss of grid shifts all the load to the output side of the XW Pro system. It is possible to install an automatic transfer switch to solve the 60 amp pass-through limitation for multi-unit systems. Sometimes called whole house transfer switches, these allow the grid to supply the load directly, typically the entire main service panel, while simultaneously supplying the input of the XW Pro. This allows for selling during solar hours, reducing grid's consumption, or for charging when needed. When the grid goes down, the transfer switch redirects the loads to the output side of the inverter. Uh, ASCO is a sister company of Schneider in Schneider Electric, and uh, I've been recommending their transfer switches for years. It just so happened we bought them a couple of years ago, but for over a decade, I've been recommending these transfer switches in multi-unit systems uh, just because they're very reliable. So. If a load assessment reveals that the switch current will not be detrimental to the transfer relays in a triple XW Pro system, then a manual bypass switch is recommended since there is no bypass interlock plate for a triple inverter system. So here's the system in normal operation, and then here's the system when you're in bypass. So you're just routing that external source directly to the load. So here we see our communication device uh, connects gateway. When you have multi-unit systems, say we had four XW Pros, the bandwidth uh, for our Zambus network would pretty much be full with those four inverters. So if you wanted to add, uh, say, six, eight charge controllers, which would be appropriate for a four inverter system, then we have a separate Zambus network in the gateway to accommodate those additional devices. And the nice thing is that you'll see everything on a single web page. So Zanbus is a peer-to-peer -peer network, it's proprietary. Um, it involves daisy chaining devices together. So each device has two Zanbus ports on it. And so when you daisy chain any number of devices together, you're always gonna have an open Zanbus port at either end of the network. Those open ports must be stuffed with network terminators. Each device ships with a network terminator.